That don't look too bad. <laughs> this is the Lost Lake in the fall. Here's another uh, take on Lost Lake. In the spring, call it Spring Lost Lake. <coughs> and this was painted at the Kettle River. Some of you have been up there. That's a, that's a lovely place to paint outdoors because it's really exciting. A lot of water, the water's rushing past, and it's a it's a wonderful spot. This is painted out in Mata, on Mata Midai at a horse ranch. Can you push it up farther so we can see the bottom? We can't see the bottom of the thing. Can you push your painting up a little bit? There we go. That way? That's good. That's good. Thank you. Okay. I suppose I kept shifting it around when I was pulling them in and out. <clears throat> this is a painting that was painted out in, in uh, California in Palm Desert. It's called Whitewater Park. It's a beautiful place. Uh, nice and cool on a nice hot day to go up there because it's at a fairly high elevation. This is another uh, painting from, from Palm Desert. Uh, one of the wonderful things there in the spring, especially if we have a lot of water, is to see the verbena on the dunes. And this blue verbena is just beautiful. And it's such a contrast with the with the uh, cold, warm colors of the of the uh, of the sands and the this is untitled <clears throat> and I and, it, and I am sure it's a it's a tear, takeoff on on one of these ponds uh, that I paint. At. I I really enjoy painting water. For some reason, I'm I'm seem to be drawn to it as I get older. For some reason, I have no idea why, but I really like painting water. Uh, this is Lions Lake Park, out by Kowalski's in uh, White Bear Lake. Across from Kowalski's is Lions Lions Park, and I've I've done quite a few paintings at Lions Park, and variations on them. This is another painting, another view at Lions Park. And this is a wild experimental thing. Uh, some of you were, were with me when I did some paintings from, uh, based on oil painters compositions. And this is a painting that took about, I'd say 18 minutes maybe, 19 minutes. But I was watch, looking at a, 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 an oil painter's beautiful composition and I just whacked that out. It was a lot of fun. It's another woodland scene. Maybe I've got too many of them in here. No. No. They're beautiful. I don't want you to get bored. <laughs> this is a pathway out in, in, uh, in, in uh, Willerney <clears throat> at, a, at a, a Catherine Abbott Park. And there are a lot of nice scenes there to paint, too. And uh, I think I've got one more here before the before the one that I want to talk to you about. Am I still in there? Now this is a, a, a painting that <clears throat> that we that I made out of the Joyce Ells annual paint out and it's a takeoff on the little uh, this is this is actually a dam across here but <laughs> I turned it into a, a little waterfall and uh, put a put a red cabin in the background. I, I want to talk to you today a little bit about something different. If you take an old painting, I've got a lot of those. I'm old myself, so I, I you take an old painting and you lay it down on a flat surface, then you spill a bunch of gesso on it, take a roller and roller coat it so that you cover up the old painting, and then you can do something interesting on it with watercolor. It acts, some of you have probably used UPO. It acts similar to UPO, but, but not quite the same. It, 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 you're able to lift out very easily. Uh, this painting 
was done on gessoed paper. And uh, I'm going to do another one for you on gessoed paper tonight. I have no idea how it's going to come out because I haven't painted it large yet. Um, I have that painting that's framed over on the wall there you can look at during the, during the break. That's also gessoed paper and the painting. Talk too much. I keep forgetting I'm not wired up. This is a piece of, uh, I think it's 140, well it is 140 pound paper. And it's, uh, I want to set it in the right spot. Do you see that pretty well? More towards us. More towards you? Yeah. Nope, turn around. A little bit more. Good. Okay. Do you want some water, Nels? I have it. To drink? Oh, I'd love that. Thank you. Put a little bit of, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're, we're all, uh, Kauai was a, was a real adventure. I, I, I was very impressed with that island. Um, so, and tonight we're going to have another adventure because I'm going to take this picture that I made, this little watercolor I made of red dirt, and I'm going to try to improve on it. I'm going to try to improve on it by giving it a, a gutsier contrast between that red, which is the, an important thing in, in Kauai, and, and between that red and the green. I mean, the, the opposite of complementaries, of course, are wonderful. But the green that I used on this painting, I got kind of stuck a little bit in uh, hookers. And uh, I, I think you're better off mixing your greens so I'm going to do some mixing on this paper with greens. I'll just set this up here so I remember about where it is. And then I'm going to grab, first I'm going to grab some big brushes. I don't like to use little brushes, but we'll use these. These aren't huge, but they're pretty good size. Did you already gesso that paper? Pardon? Did you already gesso that paper? Yes, I roller coated it, uh -huh. and and it's dry. I roller coated it. In fact, uh, a couple days ago, I did three of them. I tried. I've still got a couple of sheets at home to use. It's uh, because I've got a lot of paintings that are sort of dubious quality, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the ways you can use paintings with dubious, of dubious quality, you can put gesso on them and, and have some fun. <sighs> ah. Okay, let's uh, let's start right in with uh, I, I, the sky is kind of nice. I, I, I see the clouds there. Uh, probably gonna gonna talk a little bit less. It's hard for me to do that, but <laughs> uh, I'm going to put some a little shadowing underneath those clouds. You can see what happens with this stuff. It's really interesting. I maybe needed a little need a little other color in there. <coughs> Don't want to be too bashful with this. I've got uh, a nice blue that we're going to put in here into the sky and and uh, frame in some clouds with with that blue. That's a this is a a peacock blue. And I, I don't I hate to use the same blue all the way through on a, on, a, on a passage. I like to vary it, so I'm throwing a little uh, cerulean in there as well. And then I'll just lighten this up a little bit. And I've got a mountain scape down here. 
Need a little gray. How about a little gray? It's interesting. You put this on here and then you can really mess around with it. Does it make the paper feel like yuppo? Like Yupo? Yeah, yeah. I've never painted on Yupo. So Is I don't it like know. Is like a hot, hot press paper? Oh, hot press. It's well, it's similar to hot press, but it certainly is not hot press. It doesn't feel like hot press. It uh, it feels like um, <clears throat> watercolor on gesso. <laughs> Basically, I don't know how else to describe it. But the the roller coating that I've done has put a, a texture on this that I can feel as I run the brush across it. Now I'm going to soften some edges here a little bit on these clouds so that they aren't all... And maybe we'll put a little gray... I, I don't know whether that's... I, don't, I think that's a neutral tint. I kind of like that neutral tint. It's a nice, a nice uh, color. That's black, right? It's... well, it's not... It, it is black, but it's 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 uh, I would call it a, a warmer black than uh, Payne's gray. Payne's gray is cooler. Isn't that exciting? Whoa! Okay, I do get excited with you, and things are happening here that I don't expect a lot, and uh, that's okay. And <clears throat> my friend John Luger, who is a, of sainted memory, he's gone now. But uh, he said to me one time, where the hell do you see those purple mountains? <laughs> and I said, well, John, uh, they're, you're, they're supposed to be there, so I put them there. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll put these... Uh, purple mountains back in here. Now a little, a little, uh, a lizard crimson and some blue, some kind of blue. Um, <coughs> where did I put that? Oh, there it is. I always like to have a sponge <coughs> that I can sort of catch things on. And, and one of the things Edgar Whitney uh, preached on was whenever you have a passage, a long passage of color, don't make it all the same. Vary it. Make one side darker, one side cooler, something to change it so that it's not the same all the way across. So what I'll do is I'll probably drop a little uh, extra pigment up in here. And I'll take some of the pigment out over on this side. So that mountain range isn't boring. Great. Oh, I'm getting excited now. <laughs> There's a, a, a sort of a, a brownish yellow on the side of this mountain. You can vary, you can, I, I, I find myself uh, experimenting when I uh, put these colors on because you can vary them so much from one to the other and you can take color out and you can maybe add a little color in to give you a variety of color 
green. Let's get some greens here that we're going to mix. I'm going to try to get as much variety in those greens as I can uh, without using without using um, hookers or sap green. So what green are you using now? Green? Yeah. <laughs> what green am I using? Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's, it's a mixture of, uh, of uh, Peacock blue and um, and uh, uh, cadmium yellow pale, and uh, there's a little orange in there, and there's a little of everything in there. Actually, I'm digging around in a lot of different colors. And that's an important thing to, to to remember when you're when you're painting. Try to vary the color <coughs> in passages. If you've got a square box and it's blue so make it blue but drop some red into one side of it or see yellow into one side of it and, and work the color together so that it's not all the same now and a wonderful contrast with with uh, with uh, green is purple and if you slip a little of that in there pretty soon you've got something that's kind of exciting that's really purple Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's way too much fun. But I can take some of it out so that it's a variety of color. And I can gray up that green a little bit by throwing just a little bit of purple into that. I don't know, my, my heart's going to give out one of these days when I'm getting excited. <laughs> Let's see. What's going on here? Does it stay wet for a long time? Pardon? Does it stay wet for a long time on the paper on the gesso? Oh, it'll stay wet for a while, but when, when we take our break, I'll come back in. I'm going to have just about ready to go. Uh, when we take our break and when you come back then I'm going to do some final things like there there's some some forests that have to show up here and there there's some cracks in the rocks and there, there are a lot of interesting things that we can we can fool around and see if we can find <coughs> ways to to make them interesting uh, I'm going to put a little blue up in here. There's a village back in here, actually, with a lot of little houses and things, and you can, you can paint with this too, you know. 